Hi everyone, Paul from Paul Goes. Uh, welcome to this introductory video um, uh, into 8-Rack in Modern. Um, I'm looking to play this deck over the next few weeks um, in uh, some competitive leagues. Uh, I, it's a deck that I'm very fond of. I've, I've played many times uh, in the past. Uh, had a brief obsession with it in, uh, I think it was 2016, and I've been away for a while. And I'm particularly keen to see how well the deck plays now uh, in the new environment uh, post bannings. It's um, April of 2018, and we're a couple of months um, into the new format, uh, which is being, uh, well, at least which includes now Jace the Mind Sculptor and uh, Bloodbraid Elf. And before I jump straight into the games, I suppose it's worth having a quick look at the deck and my particular um, build that I've I've landed on um, in, in wanting to get back into the deck. Uh, it's fairly it's safe to say it's the same list you'll see in a lot of other um, or a widely celebrated general generally accepted list uh, that's played at the moment uh, for 8-rack. Um, probably the most interesting aspect of my build is the addition of two Dark Confidant in the main deck, and I also have um, uh, a third one as well as a, as a visitor in the sideboard. Um, I find that uh, the deck can sometimes be a little bit clunky when it comes to having four ofs, and uh, this is a well-accepted thing as well, having three Raven's Crime, three Thoughtseize, a single Blackmail, just to mix mix up the um, the type of discard pressure that you have available. But I also find that Bob provides you with a, a fantastic uh, kind of third dimension to the deck. Uh, it's not something you want to do on turn two. It's it's he he almost is a kind of like a four drop or somewhat something you do on turn four or five. Um, sometimes you get you know you get a, a typical sort of jund line where you go thought sees coast is clear. Bob turn two because it's safe and you go ahead and 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 uh, take uh, take the rent that he can offer you. Uh, the card advantage that he, can, that he can offer you in the early game, <coughs> but um, keen to see how well that plays out in the new in the new format. If that's still the case, that he can he can provide that kind of support to the deck. Um, my sideboard is really built up from just my own experience of what tends to really matter, um, and this is a, this is a really a, a, a debatable kind of um, question as to how you build your sideboard. There's an obvious weakness that Eight Rack has to very very fast aggressive creature based decks, uh, Burn and Zoo and Affinity and stuff like that, uh, are not great for us on game one. And uh, so we have a, a, a standard sort of removal suite here of Fatal Push, uh, a single Funeral Charm as well. I'll explain maybe another time why I don't like Funeral Charm very much. Um, I also think the deck. If we're on the draw, is often going to be quite weak against Aether Vial and humans in particular uh, in my early testing. And so I have a theory that against Aether Vial, you take out Smallpox and replace it with Bontu's Last Reckoning. Uh, and this card, I think, has done some pretty good work in, in 8-Rack uh, since it was uh, since it came into the format six or nine months ago. <clears throat> um... So that's what's happening there. The only other thing to mention maybe before we get started is um, that I have played the deck a lot. I've done a lot of my own homework uh, on the question of whether or not it's correct to go second or first in the dark. And it is widely accepted that this is the one famous deck that wants to go second in the dark. And I am actually... Having gone second with it for many, many, well, not many years, as I say, since 2016, I actually think in the current modern format, it is correct to actually go first in the dark. And I'll explain a little bit about why that is as we go in the videos. I'll show some examples maybe as they come up. Um, but for me, there are so many um, opponents now, that statistically, that you, you will see uh, on turn one, um, you know, if you you know, plays a Monastery Swift Spear or he, um, you know, plays an Aether Vial or a Noble Hierarch where it turns out that you actually would have been better off going first. Uh, the, the games play very differently when you go first. Smallpox, uh, Smallpox in particular plays very differently. But there's just that many, you know, Arbor Elf, Birds of Paradise type openings out there where uh, going first actually um, can give you a, uh, a massive... 
uh, advantage that that overcomes the extra card that if you like that we that we lose which of course that is our ultimate game plan um but robbing our opponent of the ability to to get that momentum on the first turn uh, it's it's just a theory i'm working on I, I think it probably is still correct that if you knew your opponent was on serum visions and controlling blue white or whatever that yes it, it makes sense to go second but you know we have such great matchups against control already um that the, the what you lose by going first against them is is maybe nothing again the games play out very differently um but yeah some of you guys may be screaming at me you know you're crazy man of course you want to go second but i'm just i just wonder if that narrative is based a lot on the fact that <clears throat> there isn't a general deck in modern that uh that ever wants to go second and the dice roll becomes um you know, it's it's a nice narrative to have that. Oh yeah, there's there's this diversity in the format, and there's there's a deck out there that wants to go second. But I'm just not convinced, um, based on what I've seen in my early testing of of the deck in the new world, and and the way that modern has has changed and moved now with people wanting to do stone rain me on on their second turn, and I've all I've done is play a swamp and a raven's crime, and the game's over. Uh, before I untap for my second turn. Anyway, enough ranting by me about the first turn thing. Uh, we'll see how, how that pans out in the games. I'm keen to get into it. Um, and as I'm going, um, I'll be leaving room for comments and all the rest of it. So uh, hopefully I do a good job as well and don't make a, don't make too many boneheaded decisions. It's been a while since I've really played the deck competitively, but um, uh, we'll see how we go. Okay, thanks for listening and watching, guys, and uh, we will see you in the first video.